All right, guys, I'm going to do another video, probably be a two part video on reloading precision ammo and how we go from spent brass to final reloaded ammo. Um, I recommend you get a reloading manual. This is the Spear 14th edition. Um, if you're interested in picking up this hobby and the first couple chapters in any reloading manual goes through in detail the safe way to reload as well as some tips and things to keep an eye out for. So purchase one of these books. I'm going to start this with uh, previously fired brass. So the first step in the reloading process is to remove the primers from the spent casings. Remove the spent primer by using a press to push the casing into a decapping die and the stem of the decapping die pushes out the primer through the flash hole. This one has the primer removed so you can see how the stem goes through it. I have a Lee Universal decapping die and an RCBS rock chucker single, single stage press. I have the primer tray installed to catch the primers as they come out and a 308 shell holder in the press. I'll insert each piece of brass, run it up in the die until the primer comes out. I've decapped all the brass. Now I'm going to put it in a tumbler to clean it. This is just a berries tumbler with walnut media with a little bit of Lyman's Turbo Bright polish. So I'll just dump the brass in, put the lid on, and then I'll let this run for about two hours. And then I'll pull the brass out and separate the media. I have some brass here that had not yet been tumbled versus the tumbled brass and you can see how it cleans up very well, cleans up the necks well, cleans up the insides well, and I can't show you the primer pockets, they still have it in it, but also cleans up the primer pockets well. One thing I do after I separate the walnut from the brass is make sure all the primer, all the flash holes are clean and there's no media stuck in it. I then put it in the loading box and I use Hornaday one shot case lube. I'll spray that on the cases in preparation of full length resizing. You then have to bring the case neck, shoulder, and the body of the case back into spec so it chambers easily and holds a bullet. And to do that, you use a full length sizing die where the shell is pushed in a press into this die and resized back to the correct chamber dimensions. Now I'll set up the full length sizing die. This is a Redding full length sizing die with the appropriate shell holder in the press. Raise the ram all the way up, thread down the die till it makes contact with the shell holder. Lower the ram a little bit, thread the die an additional eighth to one quarter turn. I then extend the ram all the way up till it contacts the shell holder, or the shell holder all the way up till it contacts the die. That helps square up the die. And then that's when I lock the die down in the press. And you should feel the cam over just that last little bit on the ram stroke. Then I'll full length size the case. Again, these cases were already lubed. Nice steady stroke all the way down to the bottom. Lift it back up.
after I full length size the cases, I check them for run out. I measure run out in the center of the neck, spinning the case on the Sinclair concentricity tool. You can see that the needle moves less than one thousandth. And that's what I look for in precision ammo is to keep the neck, the run out on the neck after full length sizing to less than one thousandth. You have to trim because the shell casing grows in length a little bit when you fire. You have to trim it back down to overall length. For that, you can use various trimmers. This is a Sinclair trimmer. There's a turning blade that cuts on one side and the shell is held to the proper length here and the blade is pushed down and turned to cut it. Insert the size brass into the collet, hold it in the Sinclair trimmer, spin the handle a couple times to trim the end, pop it out of the collet, put the next piece in, and I'll do this for the entire lot. So what I have here is a piece of freshly trimmed brass and you can see how thick the case looks versus a piece of brass that was just chamfered inside and out after being um, trimmed. So there's a burr that rolled onto the inside of this case neck making this web look much thicker than this web. Use a tool like this that cuts the outside neck of the case when you put it in. And then we have a tool like this that chamfers the inside of the case. To take that burr off on both the outside and the inside as in this case on the left. Clean off some of the excess sizing lube from the neck, chamfer the inside, deburr the outside of each one. There's one step that I didn't do on this brass because this was already previously reloaded and that is flash hole uniform and primer pocket uniform. So after full length sizing and trimming, I'll use the primer, the flash hole uniformer and this goes down to the inside of the primer hole and puts a chamfer on it and takes the burr off. And the second one is primer pocket uniform where this cuts all the primer pockets to a uniform depth. So you only have to do that step once for a lot of brass, uh, and then you don't have to do it again each time you reload. Now that the brass is fully prepped, sized, trimmed to length, we have to prime it. Using a RCBS priming tool, primers get fed in the tray, pushed up on a plunger, and pushed into the back of the case. So slide it in, squeeze it in. Priming tool with a tray full of primers, pick up the case, slide it in the shell holder, squeeze it to seat the case, release the trigger, check to be sure the primer pocket, the primer is slightly recessed. And do it again for the next case. After we get all the primers seated, we'll be ready to charge these cases with powder and then seat the bullets. And that'll be a second episode. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can see the other videos on the remaining steps of the process. Thank you.